Now, the National Museum of Ireland has today launched an exhibition devoted to St. Cullum Killa in their museum on Kildare Street in Dublin. It's called Cullum Killa, Sacred Objects of a Saint, uh, 1,500 Years of Devotion. And Maeve Sikora is Keeper of Irish Antiquities in the National Museum of Ireland, and she can tell us uh, more. You're very welcome to the programme, Maeve. Um, well, tell me who St. Cullum Killa was. Good evening, Cormac. Well, thanks for having me on. Well, we're celebrating a very special date because it's 1,500 years since the anniversary of the birth of, or since the birth, in fact, of St. Columba, Colum Killia, as he said. Mm -hmm. So he's one of our patron saints, along with Patrick and Bridget. Um, And the National Museum has a a remarkable collection of really important medieval artefacts associated with him that were venerated throughout the medieval period and survive to this day. So previous times I've been on this show and other shows on RT talking about things we've dug up from the ground, like yeah. fog bodies or gold, but these are artefacts that were kept and handed down generation to generation, venerated um, and, you know, oaths being sworn on, the Cahuc, the shrine of the Cahuc associated with Columba is the battler, and um, people would bring it into battle, so very special objects. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and it sounds fascinating. Um, so what can people expect, uh, apart from what you mentioned there, what can people expect when they go and see this? So we've, what we've done is we've collected together all of the artefacts that we hold in the National Museum of Ireland on behalf of the public, of course, um, and we've gathered them um, in a very special location downstairs near to the Treasury, so very near the Arda Chalice and the Cross of Kong. Um, and so we have the Shrine of the Cahot, the Battler, so the shrine that was made to uh, enshrine a manuscript that was believed to have been written by Colum Killa himself. Mm-hmm. So a really important artefact that you can see in the Royal Irish Academy. But we also have the bell and the crozier associated with St. Columba. So people actually believed, you know, in sort of supernatural powers of these objects and they would have sworn oaths on them. In fact, the bell was used, um, people would drink water out of it to, uh, you know, to ensure its, you know, its healing properties. So they're objects with incredible stories in their own right. And we've put them all together to celebrate this really important figure in Irish history. Uh, and and uh, I'm almost incredulous at the, um, at the, the, the what you have and what you're showing. Is it true mm-hmm. that these objects were made over 1,000 years ago? I mean, has that been verified? Well, so yes, it has indeed. So we have the, the shrine of the Cahuc that I mentioned mm-hmm. actually has an inscription on it, on the back. So not only do we know that it was made then, but we know who made it because his name is on the back. His name is Citric. Um, it was commissioned by um, Cahabar O'Donnell and the keeper is mentioned actually as well on it, who's a, a McGrorty. So the McGrorty's were the hereditary keepers of the shrine of the Cahuc. And they're all mentioned. So these are just you know, incredible to think that they survived to this day and they survived because they were venerated and kept throughout this history. So it's, yeah. it's a really it's a really incredible sort of a length of veneration, which is what we're also celebrating. As and part they survived of because, of, because of that veneration. And you say the bell of, of St. Columba, St. Columb Killia, that if you drink out of the bell, it, it'll cure disease. Now, That's what it was you as the keeper yeah. of antiquities, you could steal in, Maeve, couldn't you, some night and, and drink out of the bell? <laughs> Well, I could if, if it was in, it's not in my terms and conditions, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, in fact, a keeper of, of the, the Cahog and McGrorty was killed um, when the Cahog was captured in 1497. So it was a fairly dangerous job back in the day anyway. So, yeah, I, um, hope it's, I hope yeah. it's not that dangerous now. No, no, it's, it's a nicer job now. <laughs> um. <laughs> we'll have to talk to Citric if he's around. Come here to me. Uh, so when can people go and see all of this? It, it, it sounds absolutely fascinating. When When is it open? So it's open from tomorrow, so from 10 o'clock. So you just have to book in um, through through the website there in the museum or hopefully, if, you know, if it's not too busy, you can you can walk in and um, and get 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 access. And it's obviously free to everybody um, on the ground floor. So we're just hoping people will come in and enjoy it mm-hmm. um, and just, you know, appreciate the, the sort of length of tradition of, of uh, veneration of this amazing saint that oh, you can learn more about as well. Absolutely. It's well worth a visit. Colum Killa, Sacred Objects of a saint, 1,500 years of devotion. Maeve Sikora, Keeper of Irish Antiquities at the National Museum of Ireland. Thank you very much.